Oh, Gunner James 105 here. Uh, this is my Canadian built Sten Mark II uh, Star. So it's a long branch built uh, in Ontario, and, and this one's uh, 1943. Um, so I, I realize there's a lot of information uh, out there uh, regarding the history of the Sten and its evolution. You can find all kinds of uh, information on the internet and, and books, etc. So I'm not going to go into uh, the whole history of the thing here. Um, so concentrating more on the um, long branch uh, part of it, uh, I can say that uh, the uh, the first time that the Sten was uh, used in battle was uh, at uh, Dieppe, France, and uh, that uh, involved uh, mostly Canadian with some British, uh, some Americans, some Free Poles. Um, and there again, um, I encourage you to uh, uh, investigate the uh, Dieppe battle um, invasion uh, at France because there's a lot of controversy about uh, its planning and, and, and uh, and the final results, which were uh, many killed, many captured, many wounded, uh, many captured that spent the rest of the war in uh, in uh, prisoner war camps. So, uh, and that all happened uh, August of 1942. So, the Long Branch uh, factory in uh, Ontario, uh, at its height, I believe, uh, had up to 5,000, 5,500 employees and three quarters of those were uh, women and girls. They were uh, uh, unmarried, sorry, uh, it was uh, single girls and uh, married women without children and I believe their their transportation to the factory from all over Canada was was paid for. Uh, so they, they went to work in these factories, I think they were getting about 50 cents an hour and uh, for a lot of them, they could have stayed where they were, made more money at whatever job, but their interest was uh, an effort to um, try and do what they could to help uh, win the war. So they uh, they stayed uh, they stayed in the, they had like a, a dormitory uh, um, I think with a f within a few minutes walk. There was about five hundred uh, women in the in the dormitories, and then in uh, nearby homes uh, in uh, the city of Toronto and uh, so that uh, that factory of 5,000 plus uh, three quarters of the of the workers there were were women and uh, so yeah the uh, there was you know the fact that uh, for a lot of them uh, that was they had husbands and and, and uh, brothers and sweethearts uh, in the war and so uh, that was their uh, their best efforts uh, to be able to help out. Um, so I do know that uh, there was a range just outside of the factory and they would uh, test fire all of them before they packaged them up and so they would test fire them at uh, 150 yards and they do single shot uh, short bursts and then full auto and then they also did uh, where they would fire it uh, upwards through a pipe into some water uh, in a barrel and they would fire into a pipe into the, uh, like downwards into a, a barrel in the ground so they were trying or, or testing them from all all these angles just to make sure they fired in any position and then after they were tested and then they'd uh, disassemble Packed them in grease and, and put them in cardboard boxes. So um, yeah, this thing is uh, nine millimeter, thirty-two rounds. Uh, it fits in a magazine, and they would do five hundred and fifty rounds a minute. Um, five pound uh, is what they weighed about, and uh, about ten dollars to produce. Um, at the time, they were also making. Uh, many many of the number four mark one star uh, Enfields and uh, in that same factory and uh, I think they started out in 1941 it was somewhere around sixty two dollars and thirty cents to make an Enfield they did get the cost down by uh, uh, 1943 uh, around thirty two bucks thirty two dollars 
uh, a, a rifle. So in comparison, um, these were cheap to build, quick to build, and uh, they, I think their, their first shipment on the Sten out of that factory was February 1942. So this one I have here, of course, is a uh, deactivated. Um, unless you have a very special, you're a very special Canadian with a very special privilege of having uh, the class of prohibited license. Uh, then you can own one that's full auto, but otherwise the rest of us have to go uh, deactivated. I don't mind, I guess. I mean, it kills me that I can't fire this. I have nothing else in my collection I can't fire. I can't fire this one, but that's the law. And, uh, you know, the, the talk in many areas regarding the look of the thing uh, is ugly. I love the look of the thing. I've always, uh, uh, growing up, uh, uh, of course, watching the old war movies and uh, documentaries and this and that and whenever I, I mean the Sten I, I just I, I see nothing ugly about it it's it's uh, it's it's quite a cool gun I think um, I had a chance uh, when I was with the uh, uh, artillery here uh, reserve in Canada I had a chance to fire the Sterling and uh, we were doing uh, uh, out at the range we do uh, from the shoulder aimed fire uh, doing a, a shooting from the hip more or less, um, and we do uh, uh, bursts, and, and I recall the uh, the bursts, which give you about three rounds at a time. Uh, we were instructed, uh, if you say uh, uh, to time to time it for three rounds, or basically you'd, you'd say to yourself, "Son of a bitch," you know, "Son of a bitch." That was three rounds, and uh, then we could go and we tried uh, the full auto. But you you would hold it the same way. You'd hold your Sterling the same way as the uh, the sten uh, is to be held uh, properly is uh, on the uh, barrel shroud and uh, not by the magazine. Um, the uh, magazine was a little different on the sterling, or sorry, yes, on the sterling. It was uh, sort of a curved uh, uh, magazine that uh, um, fed better. It was a, a double stack all the way. Uh, these ones, uh, the sten had a double stack that turned into a single stack, so kind of a uh, causing a problem with the with the feeding so uh, holding on to that magazine and, and perhaps uh, throwing off the uh, the feed lips there uh, with that pressure uh, could cause jamming but uh, yeah so this one here and as far as I know that uh, that stock shoulder stock is uh, what the Canadian ones I don't know if that was something that they uh, started here and kind of uh, you know, was used by, by some of the uh, English stands, but uh, definitely the Canadian uh, type stock is the one you see here. So I'm going to uh, uh, show you some close-ups and I, I want to point out the areas uh, that uh, cause this thing to be deactivated. So uh, I'll just um, shut this down here and then uh, get it held in my hand and, and uh, give you some close-ups. So uh, this is the marking on the top. Um, I forgot to mention uh, these were also produced for the. Uh, uh, it was a, they had a Chinese contract uh, uh, Sten. These markings here would appear on the bottom side, and uh, I had uh, written down exactly the translation on the uh, the markings on the top. Um, Missed getting that in here, but it was uh, Chinese writing on the top of the uh, where you see this here was was uh, different, and so uh, everything operates um, the way it normally would. You know, you can uh, uh, don't know if you can do it one-handed, but you can uh, you can. Whoops! Perhaps I'll do this here. So. Can be caught. I can place this in uh, in the safe position. I can uh, pull the trigger. I can uh, slam that forward. This uh, magazine 
can be released. This here, this one hand is impossible, but uh, need a little elbow here. But I can turn that to the uh, I can turn that to the downward position, which covers that up there, makes it a little easier for stacking. You know, you lay that down, and uh, with this down, it's going to stack better. So uh, it has the uh, repetition. So that's where it is right now in that position there. And uh, one would go to uh, automatic by pushing it in to the other side. Always love the peep sight. But uh, this one here, like any of them, <clears throat> well, before I get to that, um, I ordered a, I ordered a uh, sling for this on eBay. Thought it might show up today. And uh, through all the actual photographs and all the, the things I've looked at, not that I've looked at everything, but the, uh, the mounting of the sling, the proper mounting of the sling, one has uh, a sling with the uh, loop that would go into one of these holes. And uh, thanks to a great video by CJ Campbell, pointed out the proper attachment for the, uh, the back part of the sling because I've seen them just wrapped around the, the stock. And uh, it was pointed out and it makes sense to me that this little space right in there is where the loop goes. So I appreciate that information. So when I get that sling, I can put it on and uh, have the thing set up properly. So this here, one handed again. I think I'll set the camera down. One second. So this is welded. So just back of the stock. So I can't turn that little piece out of there and take the bolt out. So that was uh, that was the uh, one piece of deactivation. If I were to pull this cover off here, just two screws, one on each side. I've done it already and had a look. But they've uh, they put a weld on the inside, so I can't move that. And uh, the next little bit of uh, welding is right down on the bottom. They've they put a plug in that barrel. Now this is not going to show up very well. I'll just try to get a little closer to the light. But down. Down towards the bottom, there's a weld and a plug in that barrel. And uh, finally, the, uh, the bolt, of course, is missing some components there to uh, strike that uh, round that would be in there. So the, the firing pin or whatever has been disabled on it. And uh, the other thing that, <clears throat> that makes this one a little different You'll see many stems, and I even saw one. Uh, it was a long branch, and I know a lot of the British and the Chinese contract. This whole section here, or all the way around, so all the way around here, you'd see a, a quite a large weld. You'd also see um, a lot of welding in this area. Um, it was just the uh, the way that some of them were built. I was told. By the fellow that uh, that does these up, he's done over a hundred of them, and uh, as far as the British or uh, Chinese contract, that they were a little rougher made, and that the Canadian version was uh, probably the the better uh, better made ones. But there are 
little markings with the uh, it's hard to make out there'd be a sea broad arrow in, in various places on here and uh, this magazine does contain the uh, if you take that little plate off um, there is a spring in there so that that's all complete but yeah that was the other part of the deactivation is the uh, that little feed ramp there is fastened or welded so it can't uh, take any rounds in there at all uh, normally uh, by Canadian law uh, anything that would fire uh, automatic or semi-automatic anyways um, the uh, government this is just an example of a brand magazine so we're only allowed on anything semi-automatic five rounds so there's a rivet in there stopping this from holding any more than five rounds so if this were able to be used it would have the same thing it would have a rivet but uh, our laws uh, you know I mean semi-automatic is fine even the barrel length for uh, restricted license which I have would be fine but because they say it's too easily converted to automatic then it has to be deactivated so but uh, I hope I've given you enough info on my piece that I got. I, this, I think it's two weeks ago now that I picked this up at the uh, super huge 1,000 table gun show in Calgary, Alberta. And uh, just for the hell of it, I don't think it makes any difference one way or the other, but this here for interest sake if I can find there we go uh, on the bottom side is the, uh, the serial number so definitely the L is included in all of the long branch firearms so I hope you uh, gain a little info uh, on what it was all about at the Long Branch uh, factory and uh, what they're putting out. So this is a fine example, I think. So for now, thanks for watching.